the sun. Thanks for joining us at Westview on this Mother's Day Sunday. We're going to worship and celebrate for the next hour, and we're glad you're here to do that with us. Put your hands together. Salvation tearing through the dead of night. See the kingdom burst into color at the speed of light. And freedom shaking up the atmosphere as the shadows fade into nothing as the day appears. Beyond the skies above, love reaching out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our God. Waking up the kingdom come See the hope of heaven Shining like the rising sun Now forever Lifted up from death to life There's no fear in love And no darkness in his endless light Beyond the skies above, love reaching out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our God. Oh, we look to the sun, set our eyes on our Savior, see the image of love, sing His praises forever. Reaching out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our God. Sing it again. Beyond the skies above, love reaching out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our God. Oh, we look to the sun. We're so glad you're here with us. We hope you grabbed a worship guide on your way in. Please look over that. It's going to tell you a lot of things that are coming up. Right now, we're going to continue in our worship. We're going to raise a hallelujah this morning. The louder we sing, the faster the enemy flees. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody I 
be. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. And here in your love, here in your love, there's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. And here in your love, here in your love, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain.
you go to, with me to a time of prayer this morning? Heavenly Father, thank you for your blood. It's true there's nothing that we can do to clean ourselves up or, or to even touch the white of snow that you offer us. Keep us mindful of that, God, that it's nothing that we've done but all because of you. And we're so thankful, God. We come to you this morning ready to celebrate and give you glory um, for moms, but more than that, for all women and, and for your design, the way you created us to love and nurture, for the, for the way that you knit us together God, for your masterpiece. Remind us to look to you always for a reminder of that design and for the freedom that comes with it, God. Remind us of the message last week from Pastor Brian. We are the most free when we're within your design. God, guide and direct our steps and our thoughts and our words with your design in mind. And when those around us look to us, when it causes the world to kink their neck, we point to you. God, we lift up the other churches in this city who are gathering today and, and worshiping you with their hearts lifted and their voices raised. God, prepare us to hear the message that art's bringing that we would soak it up, that our hearts would need the words that you've given him and that we would soak it up like a sponge. God, we pray for Pastor Brian, uh, who's with Kara, celebrating the dedication of their grandson, Abbott, today. Would you just fill them up? Uh, give them rest, give them peace, give them safe travels. And we pray that for others who are away from us on this Sunday morning. Would you be with them as well? We pray these things in your name. Amen. All right, I promised you a Sunday full of celebration, so we're going to start with graduates. So if you are graduating, this includes high school, K-State, MCC, Manhattan Technical, any other program that I'm not thinking of. If you are completing a season in your life and moving on to another, come up here with me, please. Come up, come up, come up. We want to celebrate you. Stand on this side of me if you would, Keegan. Anyone else? We do not, yes, come, come. We don't want to miss anyone. Okay, so what I'm going to have you do, we will give them lots of applause at the end, but I'm going to start um, the mic down here with... Danny, I want you to give your name, because not all of us know every name, but give us your name, what you're completing, what degree and from where, and then your best shot at your next plans. I know sometimes those are question marks, but tell us what you can. <laughs> Hi, my name is Danny Wendell. I'm graduating veterinary school, and I'm going to do an internship at LSU. I'm Renee Snowden. I'm graduating Manhattan High School, and I'm planning on going to K-State to um, major in fine arts and get a concentration in graphic design. Hi, my name is Keegan Mockaby, and I'm graduating from K-State. I'm with a, a Bachelor of Fine Arts um, with concentration in drawing. And after that, I plan to do cartoons and hopefully someday um, go into an animation program like in Hollywood. Um, my name is Ashley Hernandez, and I'm graduating Job Corps with high school and carpentry, and I'm planning to go to KCA for textile and apparel. Would you pray with me over these four? Heavenly Father, Thank you for this season um, that we've had these graduates here at Westview. 
Um, some of them might be staying, and we're thankful for that. Others are going, and God, we just pray your blessings go with them. Um, change is hard, even when it's good and exciting. And so wherever you've called um, these four to go and, and be in their next season, would you, um, we just pray that they would be surrounded and connected soon, whether that's coworkers or neighbors, um, with a church body like the one they had here at Westview. Um, God, we pray that their eyes are fixed on you and that they're reminded, even when things are hard, that you love them and you're working all things for their good. And so we celebrate um, completion and uh, we look to you for how you'll guide their next steps. And again, we thank you for the time we've had with them at Westview, and we pray all this in your name. Amen. As you leave today, we have a gift from you, from all of us here at Westview. I want you to take one. Give them one more round of applause. Here you go, bud. Thank you. And there's one other graduate. I caught him by surprise in first service. Um, he has to stand up to come forward anyway. <laughs> Pastor Art is graduating Fuller Seminary Theological next month with a PhD. Well, not uh, doctor ministry, yeah. But thanks. I'll get you back in staff meeting um, with that. Hey, let's have some fun today. Um, it is Mother's Day, and I get to do a little bit of that stuff today. Um, I know there's some traditions that we have here at Westview that I've been learning about since I'm fairly new, but there's some other traditions that I've done as a pastor in the past, and so we're going to kind of mend or bl blend some of those today. And um, one of those is um, throwing out chocolate. Is that okay? All right? Okay. No fighting. No fighting. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so... What we're going to do is this. We're going to have some fun stuff for Mother's Day, okay? So, uh, and I, I see the balcony up there. I'll try to get it to you, okay? But I'll, I'll be looking for you if you're up there, okay? So, um, let's do this. A, a mother that has been a mother the longest. Is there a mother that's been a mother more than 50 years here? A person that's been a mother more than 50 years. Okay. I need some help. <laughs> Emma, would you run around? Would you run? Sorry. <laughs> would you? I, I didn't think I was going to be able to get that many. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is that right? I've got some more here, too. Ten. Right there is Chung there, too. Okay. Okay, I'm coming that way. Okay, I'm going to start throwing them. So you got to grab that one. Okay. Um, I tried to do... My twin sister's a pitcher, but I did that earlier, and it just went all crazy. So um, can I come to you? Can you... I'm going to Here we go, here we go There, that's my daughter's back from college And um, anybody upstairs? Okay, here we go, M, here's two more We got a cut off here Cut off, cut off person right there Okay, we got a cut off man over here Can I, can I Okay, here's, this is for Millie So I'm going to throw to you, um, um, Skylar Real quick for Millie, okay Behind you Here we go, you catching for her? Okay, nice, okay Nice, this is great Okay so you've been the mother the longest. Okay, right here. Oh, no, I, I, Max, I know. No, okay. I know. I know better than that. Uh, okay, second one is this. Most recent mother. Has there been a mother here that has given birth in the last year? Yeah, they're, they're actually in the cry rooms right now. Here we go. Right over there. Okay. Oh, sorry. That's okay. They're going back to you. Okay, back. Here we go. Oops, right here. Nice. Yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's kind of a high pitch. Oh, you get it? Did you get it? Okay, good. good. Good catch. Anything else? Nice. Okay, here we go. Just because there's a couple more things we're going to do, though. Okay, here we go. The mother that has traveled the farthest. Is there anyone that's traveled out of state? Just stand up if you've traveled out of state today. No, no not like ever. Like, I, I don't mean if you've never left the state of Kansas. I mean, if today you don't live in Kansas and you traveled here. That's what I mean, okay? I don't know if that was very clear, okay? So... <laughs> So where, where are we at? Where, where's home? Where do you call home? Florida? Both of you? Okay, here we go. Underhand pitch. Oh, okay, coming again. Oh, I wasn't too bad. I wasn't too bad, okay? We're getting them near. Okay. Any, anywhere else? A state? Yes? Missouri? Okay, that counts. Okay, here we go. <laughs> anywhere else? Oh, in the back. Tulsa, Oklahoma. 
I was an Okie from Muskogee for a while. Here we go. It's coming back to you. Oh, nice. Good catch. Okay. Everybody's like uh, paying attention because then we hit the face. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, most children present. Is there anyone that has more than five children here present? Four children? Where is Elizabeth? She was just right there. Was five here? Awesome. Where'd he go? Four, four counts. That's pretty good. <laughs> Any four? Anybody four? Four kids here? Okay. I think Elizabeth was right here, wasn't she, a second ago? So I'm just going to put it right there because, you know, anyways, <laughs> if it gets there. Angela, I'm watching. Just kidding. Okay, I'm just kidding. Okay, I'm just kidding. Okay, how about this? Most grandchildren, they don't have to be present. Does anyone have 10 or more grandchildren? Yeah, Wisa was early. Where's Wisa? Yeah, she was here. Nice. <clears throat> how many grandchildren do we have? Ten. Oh, that's great. Okay, awesome. How many grandchildren? Eleven. All right. How many grandchildren? Eleven. This is great. How many? Fifteen. Woo! Thirteen. That counts, too. Okay, come on, Melissa. You're going to have to help. Cut off, person. Okay. We got somebody upstairs. Huh? How many do you have? Eleven? Okay, I'm coming that way. Here we go. Everybody's, everybody's awake. Okay. Is that everybody? I think I saw somebody up there. Where's Wisa? Okay, you get it. You take it for Steve. I'm going to see if it gets there. Oh! You didn't see it, but it, it made it. It went right into his hand. Okay, here's another one. Most legs... In your household, can't be, can't not, I'm not talking about cattle, like if you're a farmer, but I'm saying in your household, if you have a spider, that's eight legs, okay? If you have a pet spider, pet spider, okay, pet. So any pets you might have or kids you might have, how many legs are in your household today? Go, do your math. 18, 20. Anybody over 25? 20? Odd I, know, I know, I did that again. It's like you got a three-legged dog or something like that. <laughs> I did it last time, too. Okay. How many, you, how many you have? Okay, that counts. Come on up here. Oh, I don't know if I can get up there. Oops, sorry. Okay. <laughs> what did you do for church today? I dodged chocolate. Okay, but anybody else? Okay. We got a 20 up there? Huh? Up there? Okay, here we go. Got it to you. Woo-hoo! Okay. Okay, one more. Coming to you. Cut off person. Okay, nice. Chocolate is a lot of fun, and so is being, I think, a parent, a mother, I would think. I, 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 if my mom was here, I would have said, um, if, uh, if your son's preaching today or something like that, right? You know what I mean? Or something like that. Um, motherhood is one of these things where I look at my mom, and I think of, I think of the way she influenced me so many different ways, and, and, uh, and, and we celebrate motherhood today, and we celebrate parenting, too, in, a, in, a, in an amazing way. Now, um, I don't know if you've... Um, I don't know if you, you've been with us these last couple weeks, but these last couple weeks after Easter, we've been kind of um, doing what the disciples were doing. As soon as Jesus resurrected on Easter Sunday, the question was, now what? Like, what do we do now? And there's this moment, like 40 days, where they're kind of trying to figure this out. Like, what does it mean to live in this new way with God since Jesus has not only died but resurrected? And so we've been going through a series called Ignite. And Brian has preached two sermons previously, and they've talked about the three, three parts of what's required for combustion. There's spark, there's fuel, and there's oxygen. And we've spoken of spark being this encounter with Jesus, like the living, resurrected Jesus, that, oh, now, now we get what you're about, Jesus. Now our lives are different. Now we understand, and there's an encounter with the living Christ. That's essential. But then Brian spoke yesterday or last week about this excellent idea of forgiveness and then moving into this freedom The freedom within the design God's given us this beautiful freedom we have as followers of Jesus and that's the fuel So we've got the spark of encounter and then the fuel of this forgiveness and then freedom that's there And today I get to speak about oxygen And oxygen is what we'll speak to Is the Holy Spirit The Holy Spirit We're going to look at different 
ideas of this idea of oxygen and how oxygen correlates, some of the properties of oxygen correlate to the way in which um, the Holy Spirit works in our lives as well. And we're going to look at that as, as we walk through what it means to live in the life of the Holy Spirit as followers of Jesus Christ. And through this sermon, I'm going to give different images of what oxygen um, different images of oxygen and how that might correlate specifically to, again, who the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit is about. Okay? It was the summer of uh, 2006, and uh, my wife and I were both doing school up in um, Canada, Vancouver, Canada, and she was in an intense class, Hebrew class, so she's like going full speed. I, um, at this time, I was, I was pastoring, but also um, um, I was a community coordinator. And during this time, I wasn't at school, so Jenny could be at full-time school. And so this summer, and I had um, the community coordinator at the place we lived kind of took care of things that were going on um, in the area. And then also, I had, my children were very young at that time. Um, Sam was almost three, almost, and my daughter Emma was all, about six. And um, <clears throat> so we decided, because I'm kind of stay-at-home dad. I'm going to do this. Um, Jenny's already gone. She had 12-hour days of study and stuff. So I, I took off. It's 8 o'clock. We're going to leave at 8 o'clock. So you know how that goes when you're trying to get kids out the door. Nothing goes quickly. Nothing goes quickly, right? So um, I wash them. Check, right? Okay. Um, they have clothes on. Check. They have matching clothes on. Doesn't matter. They don't have, I don't care. <laughs> they, have, they have socks on, yes. They have, we had all these different types of things that you had to go through. I had three different bags that I would have to have to get out of the house with my children. Do you have these bags you know what I'm talking about? One was a diaper bag in, in, in case there was explosions that happened. Another one was the change of clothes bag, which, which happened almost every time we went out, okay? And the other one was before cell phones that had really good cameras. It was a, actually a camera bag. I literally had three bags around my neck. I'm ready to walk out of our uh, little apartment. <clears throat> As I'm walking out, we're going to go to Science World, this place that, uh, that we have season tickets to, season passes, and then our kids can kind of run in these open spaces, and other parents can stand against the wall and go, whew, for a little while. As they're running and getting energy out. So we were going to Science World. And as I'm walking out of the door with my two kids kind of running around and moving toward our Honda, our Honda hatchback station wagon, um, with the bags around my neck, I get outside the door and all of a sudden I hear a loud screeching noise, very loud. What we had had in this apartment complex or townhouses that I was, uh, we lived in was this huge rat that was about this big. <laughs> huge, that's not the tail, it was just fat, it was fat. And, and it, we'd seen it around, and I was a community coordinator, so they go, we got to figure this out, okay? <laughs> Whatever, so it's my job. So we had to trap it. We have a lot of kids around, so we're not going to poison it, right? Because um, then the kids would eat the poison. And we're in Canada, so you don't kill anyways. So anyways, we're, we're going to smash the thing. But anyways, okay, but anyways, but we trapped it, so we trapped it. So we're trapping it, and we've got it trapped. So we've got a cage that was in my yard, and as soon as I'm walking out of the door, bam, the trap goes off. And I hear this rat screeching, and I've got all my bags, and I got my kids, and I'm like, oh no. And everyone's like, we caught the rat, you know, and it was okay. And then we gotta get rid of it. And I'm like, uh, well, it's probably most efficient if I just took it with me. <laughs> Anyways, I did. So I've got three bags, kids running around, grab the trap, and I'm walking with it, and it's just screeching and just inside of there. It's just madder than a hornet. So I start walking to our car. I get our kids in our car. And do you remember car seats? Do you remember how long this takes? I, I feel like I had to do workout just to be able to get in the positions to get in there. And anyway, so I'm in there like this, you know, buckling them, and then I come over and buckle Sam, like, you know, and trapeze. Okay, and then I go in the back of the car, and I've got a hatchback Honda. So I put the bags down, and I put the cage right in the middle with this live rat in it, screeching like crazy. Close the door, get around, and I get in the car to drive down the hill. We're going one mile. We live near the ocean. We're in the endowment lands, if you're familiar with Vancouver. And we're going down the hill, to, to down the hill near the ocean where there's a big open area where there's a big forest. And I'm just trying to get down to that spot. But as we're going down, I begin to drive, thinking actually immediately, like, I think Jenny would be pretty proud of me right now. I'm like, I'm really multitasking right now. I'm, I'm kind of knocking out of the park as a parent right now. But then I started to drive. And in the rearview mirror, I could look and I could see both of my kids, you know, just sitting there with their feet kicking, smiling, you know what I mean? Just looking at me. And there's this rat that's screaming behind them. 
But what they can't see, but I can see, is that it's beginning to move out of the cage. And it's at least a fourth of the way out, but it's screeching and pulling itself out. And I'm like, oh, no. Like, can you imagine being in a car with seatbelts on and then I can just, I just, I just run around my head. I just, I had this in my head. I'm like, oh no. So I'm driving. So I take a detour, not all the way down the hill, the mile. I go a half mile. I pull over in this gravel area where I see some wooded areas, okay? A wooded place. I go, I gotta get this rat out now. I, I drive in really quickly. I turn the car off really quickly. I can't get the keys out of the car. I'll find that out later. I'm like, why can't I? I'm, I'm such an affrantic. So I run around. I grab the kids out of the car seats. Emma's like, I know a spot. So Emma starts running ahead. Sam is, 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 is slower than Emma, but he, 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 and he's got a, he had a big head. So, so, <laughs> so beautiful blonde head. So they, we're, we're running down a hill, and Emma's ahead of him, and he wants to stay up with his sister, but then his head got ahead of his feet, you know? And he just did this skid, and it was it literally grass stains all over, but he had bright blonde hair, and it's just a skid right down the middle of his head. It was just, it just he just ate it right down. And so I, I've got a cage and a crying kid, and then Emma's like, it's over here, Dad, it's over here. So I get the cage, finally. We open it up. That rat, it's, by, by this point, it's, it's halfway out. Like, it had to kind of shimmy back down, because it, it was just screeching, and finally runs off. And we go, Whew. let's go to science world. <laughs> Walk back up the hill with the cage and my kids. Get to the car. Car won't start. I'm like, are you kidding me? Really? And I look up, and it's, it's a half mile up the hill. So kids on the shoulders. You know, we, I walk up the hill. I get back to the house. I'm drenched in sweat by this point, by the way. I drop the kids off. I talk to a friend. They said, oh, yeah, they can play for a bit. I go, you watch them. We're going to go to Science World just in a little while. Sure, no big deal. Great, thanks for watching them. I get a friend to take me down the hill. I go down the hill. I get in the car. He's sitting with me and says, I go, the keys won't come out. He goes, you've got it in drive. <laughs> and it worked, okay? My brain just all, like, I'm thinking of a rat, right? I'm, I just turn the car off, right? So then I'm like, Ugh, I'm sweat. I'm soaked all the way through my shirt. I, I drive back up the hill. I'm like, okay, we're going to science world. We're going to science world. I walk back up, and I see my kids, and they, in five minutes, five they, they got in the sandbox, and it, they got water, too, I think, and it was, it, they had sand and mud in every crevice of their body, and I thought, how did this happen? And I literally brought them in. I still had my head. I want to go to Science World, but I'm exhausted. I walk in. I look at the clock in our, in our, in our living room, and it isn't even 9 o'clock yet. <laughs> it's not even 9 o'clock, and I thought, I can't do this. This is less than an hour. That's, that's parenting. Like, like, I just think of those just snapshots through our lives of parenting and thinking, I can't do this. Like, I don't have the power in me to do this. Literally, I don't have the power in me to do this. And I think sometimes when we actually are in the life of faith, and even in the life with God, the things that we have in front of us, we know we can't do. We want to do, we desire to do, but we don't have it in us to actually do all of what we want to do, all of what we hope to do, all of what we long to do as parents, and as anything. And I'm here to tell you today, I hope to encourage you today, to know that, that we need this power, but this power as a parent that God desires for us is given to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. We are not left alone only to our own abilities or our own work. God, through a relationship with Jesus Christ, gives us the Holy Spirit. And we are not going um, and we are now going to actually see and check out uh, a little bit about what this Holy Spirit is and what it does for us today. Okay? If you've got your Bibles, you can open those up. We're going to bring it up in a moment. We're going to be in <clears throat> the book of Acts, Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 speaks about the way the Holy Spirit begins to, to come in a way that it changes the people that receive this. People that are followers of Jesus are empowered by the Holy Spirit, and there is an ignition that happens, and we watch it through the book of Acts as it spreads like wildfire. The, the heart of God is working through these people and through the church, and it changes them, and we're going to watch and see what happens with that. Acts chapter 1, verse 6 begins this way. It says, So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? 
Jesus said to them, It's not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. These are some of Jesus' last words, and he's saying that you wait for this, because when the Holy Spirit comes, this, this life that we desire to live, this ignited heart, happens with encounter, with this freedom that we have in Jesus Christ, and then the Holy Spirit, which is the oxygen. It's the oxygen. The power of the Holy Spirit is to an ignited heart what oxygen is to a flame. The power of the Holy Spirit is to an ignited heart what oxygen is to a flame. The Holy Spirit is the oxygen of our lives. Now, one of the words here is witness. And that original word is martyr. We, we might get the word martyr from, martyrion. That's, that's the word. It means witness. You will be my witnesses. You'll be my martyrs. When we hear the word martyr, we sometimes think death. And some of the people did die as being witnesses for this. But what that word does not, it's, it's not emphasizing death. It's, just, it's emphasizing life. The word means a visible, tangible, oftentimes audible witness of the work of God in our lives. Without the Holy Spirit, you and I are not able to be called to be who we were meant to be. To witness does not mean to die, or to martyr does not mean to die. It means to live and live a life that points to God. And that might end in persecution, but it will definitely be a life lived in the power of God. The power of the Holy Spirit also enables us to do the will of God. To, to do what we, we desire to do To do what God desires us to do And it, it, it animates it It gives us the ability to do that In the same word This word power You might know this It comes from the same word we use for dynamite It's the same Greek word Didymus It's the same word we use for dynamite It has the idea of power That we get this, this, um, this, this from power The idea of the source of power The Holy Spirit gives us this power to live This radically lives of love Of grace, of integrity, of hope That's what the Holy Spirit does In us The Holy Spirit empowers us, you and I To live in the will of God Beyond our human boundaries um, Some of you I think are runners um, uh, I know some of you are I, I'm, I'm more of a sporadic runner You know what I mean I'll run for a couple of years And all of a sudden I gain 40 pounds And I'm like I really need to run again You know And then, then I'll start running again And I've started running again uh, Recently And I'm re realizing How out of shape I am And how that happens Is I'm like Run walking I'm like come on man I was running before But and I'm like man I'm out of shape And I'm winded And everything like this That's actually oxygen Because I'm not, uh, I'm not My body's not trained To bring the oxygen That my body needs At this moment I love the idea of when we run, though, what we, we breathe oxygen deep into our lungs. And some of you that are, that are um, scientific, that, uh, that love anatomy and physiology, will be able to even, um, would be able to explain this even more. But as, as, as we take in the oxygen, it goes into our lungs, and then it's, it's brought into our bloodstream, and then in through our bloodstream, it's piped to every single molecule of our body. There's, there's, it's sent to all these places. The oxygen is this lifeblood to every part of our body. And in the same way, in the same way, the Holy Spirit is what animates and gives us life into every area of our lives. It helps us move and be. It helps us live in the places that God desires us to live. It helps us go beyond our capacities and boundaries, what we think, to love and to expend grace. The Holy Spirit is the oxygen of our lives. I, um, um, I've been thinking about this for a while And um, one thing I want us to do is this I want us to pause in a moment I want us to pause and I want us to, to actually breathe Another image of, of oxygen is, is just the breath that we take in a normal day So I actually want us to pause and just rest for a second You might want to close your eyes for a second We're going to take a big breath, okay? Let's do that Okay Another one I just want you to keep breathing Just keep breathing
as we inhale and exhale, in the same way the Holy Spirit um, does work in us. As we inhale, we take in this life-nourishing oxygen that's taken into our lungs and oxygenates our blood, travels through every cell of our body, and oxygen is then taken in and nourished in every part of our body, from our brains to our toes. Oxygen gives life. And so too does the Holy Spirit. It not only gives life, but it cleanses and renews. In this breathing, when we exhale, we release carbon monoxide, or dioxide, sorry, that, that um, uh, can harm our bodies. And the Holy Spirit also cleanses and purifies us. The Holy Spirit has the power to bring life and cleanse um, from the things that are toxic in our lives. Not only bringing life, but also changing us and making us holy. Making us in the deepest places different who we were meant to be. Today, in what ways do you need the life of God? In what ways do you need the life, in what ways do you need life from the Holy Spirit? Today, in what ways do you need life from the Holy Spirit? Today, in what ways do you need the cleansing work of the Holy Spirit in your life? What do you need today, right now? The Holy Spirit is the oxygen of our lives. Lastly, this is one thing about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a what, it is a who. It's not a something, it's a someone. It, um, the Holy Spirit is not an impersonal force. I, I, I like Star Wars movies, okay? I like Star Wars movies, right? But the Holy Spirit is not the force. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not, it's not an impersonal um, force that moves in and out and kind of is, is good and bad, and we can kind of manipulate it somehow. We cannot manipulate the Holy Spirit. And the power of the Holy Spirit comes from a relationship, not from something that we can somehow mismanage or somehow harness outside of that relationship. The Holy Spirit is a who, not a what. It's a someone, not a something. Do you know that, that this Holy Spirit is God? It's the very Spirit of God. God is the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is with us, and it's unified, and it is God. But did you know that if you are a Christian, God lives within you? God lives in you. The God who made the universe and every molecule in the universe lives in you. And because God, the person who lives in you, you having power inside of you beyond the, the force of 100,000 nuclear bombs living within you, giving life, cleansing, and giving you space for greater and greater life to live who you were meant to be, who God's created you to be, alive with him. In the same way, in the same way, there can be no flame without oxygen. There can be no Christian life without the Holy Spirit. If you don't live into the Holy Spirit, if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to change us and do this, we will, we will not do what we desire to do. And we will less than. So what do you want me to do, Art? How do we do that? We open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit. We say, God, I need you. I need you to animate my life. God, I need you more and more. I need you, God. I need more of you, God. And like Lene said, God's been singing that over us before creation of the world. I want more of you, Art. And so as we offer ourselves to God, I, wherever you are today, my encouragement is that this desire for this oxygen, this life-giving spirit would be for you, whether that's to animate new life or cleanse from within, and this Holy Spirit to animate you and I to be who God's called us to be. That's what my hope is today. The Holy Spirit is the oxygen of our lives. And what I'd like to do is do something a little risky. I'm going to sing, not for you, but with you, okay? Um, I'm going to sing a song that's basically a prayer. And we're going to sing that together, and we're going to sing it to God. And if you're able to sing it, I want you to. And to be authentic, 
It's a song that it's been around for a while. It's called Spirit of the Living God, Fall Fresh on Me. Spirit of the Living God, Fall Fresh on Me. This is meld me, mold me, shape me, use me. Spirit of the Living God, Fall Fresh on Me. And we're going to sing that together. And I'm going to sing it and be vulnerable, but I'm, I'm not singing it to you, okay? But we're singing together to God, okay? So let's do that together, okay? Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. the ushers to come forward now and as we're in this space let's just stay here in a few moments there'll be a offering it's past that is a place where finances go sometimes but when that offering goes by I want to encourage you if there's anything that God may be stirring in you to offer to this good God who wants more of you that you just offer that And that may not be tangible. But as that goes by, offer yourself to God in a new way. I'm gonna pray for us as we do this. Lord, I pray this offering, which is more than the finances that go by, but our whole lives, would be a space that would please you. I pray, God, that you would give us your spirit in ever-increasing ways and that we would, you'd help us to have capacity for that, God. And we need you to do the things, parenting and other things before us, God. We need you to do it in the way you desire for us to do. May we reflect your love. And may you do deep work in us, God, beyond what we know with your spirit. Pray this for your glory. Amen. Here's to the mothers. Here's to the boo-boo kissers. Here's to the get up and warm the milk at 2 a.m. women. You are braver than you know. You make the music that makes the life, that gives the rhythm to the day in and out and in again. Courageous. You deliver babies by C-section or adoption certificate, or by push and pant and wailing battle cry of birth. You give more than you think you have. And when you're empty, when you're bone dry, you wring out one more drop, one more bottle, one more soothing the temper tantrum. Hero, you make a budget stretch, you clip coupons, you fight ketchup stains, you face the awkward parent-teacher moments, you listen, you translate for your child, you do the hard work of teaching at every turn, you find a hundred new ways to answer a hundred new versions of the question, why? Champion, you show up, you take photos, you cheer. You shuttle boys and bags of gear between sports fields and serve up ice cream afterwards. 
You disagree with him. You make her change her skirt, but you love fiercely from beneath those unruly bangs. You learn to laugh at your reflection. You revel in your smiley wrinkles. Real. You lose your temper. You yell and apologize and stamp your foot and prove that you are human. You cry. You venture out into an ocean of vulnerability with only a small dinghy and two short oars to keep you afloat when you become a parent. Anchor. You yield your figure, your abs, your size four jeans, but your will turns to muscle unheard of. It grows strong with determination. No one will wound these children without going through you first. You are a last harbor, a lighthouse in the storm of internet and Facebook, failed grades and peer pressure. But in the everydayness of these moments, you start to feel it. The weight of glory, the glorious ordinary. And on your quietest, least interesting days, you get better at hearing the music of motherhood. Slowly a harmony rises from the collection of tasks every mother cycles through in a day. The sacred marriage of the mundane and the eternal. The small directly related to the massive. Kids walking around like so much eternity with skin on. There is no part of your everyday wash and rinse and repeat routine that isn't significant. You make the music that makes the life that gives the rhythm to the day in and out and in again. You are braver than you know because you mother. We do want to thank the mothers that are with us. Um, and uh, what we'd like to do, <laughs> we'd like to give you something, it's a little, um, it's extra gum because you're extra special, okay, <laughs> today. And so, but we, um, we know that motherhood goes, is, extends much larger than just biological mothering. Um, we know that, and, and actually we're aware that this day is hard for some people. Um, because maybe you've had mothers that you, you wished were different. Um, maybe, maybe actually they're gone, and maybe just remind you of that, or, or perhaps you're not able to have children. And we're just aware of you. We're aware of you these days, too. But we do want to make sure we celebrate <clears throat> the many ways that people can be mothers, um, that, that mothers can be mothers. And so, so if you are a person, a woman, that's a person, I'm sorry, a woman that's eight, 18 or older, um, if you could stand up, because we believe that if you're 18 or older, um, there's probably places that you have loved and, and spiritually mothered, at least in some way, in some people's lives. So if you are a woman that's 18 years or older, um, why don't you stand? And we're going to have actually our high school students. You didn't know this at a time, but I need you now, okay? If you're here, come on down here, and I want you to just actually just grab some of these and go hand them out to people, okay? So don't take the whole buckets, just to actually just take some out and go hand them out to people that are standing, okay? Awesome. Way to go, guys. I, I would start throwing, but um, I don't think, I think people are still are trying to be traumatic over that. So, <clears throat> more and more people. Come on up. I might have to throw some up there, though. Um, actually, Sam, would you walk up to the top? Would you walk up to the top? And um, <clears throat> what I'd like you to do is, as they're walking out and giving those out, um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to pray over us. Um, yeah, once you've got one, go ahead and sit down. Thanks. <laughs> Unless you want more. <laughs> and what I'd like to do is, as they're giving those final ones out, um, what I'd like to do is, is, I'd like to just pray over us as we go, okay? Thankful that you're here. Thankful that, uh, that we're celebrating motherhood, but also knowing that it's in the power of the Holy Spirit that, that we can do and, and animates us to do any of these things that really we're called to do um, in the life of Spirit. Thank you. So let's pray together as we leave, okay? I thank you for the grace that brought us to this very moment, God. Father, I thank you for the way that Jesus has come and set us free. And I thank you for spirit. Thank you, spirit, that you've come 
and given us life and animated us for hope. I pray, God, that this group that's here as we gather together, God, that you would mark us and send us in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to be an alive people full of your grace. And I pray that you would send us wherever you want to send us this week and that we would rightly represent you by the power of the Holy Spirit in the actions that we do and the words that we say. And I pray that you would gather us back together to celebrate what you've been doing in our lives and the lives of people around us. Oh God, bring us um, more of your Holy Spirit and may you change us in the deepest places. We pray all these things through Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for being here today.